Mulcahyn, proprietor of the stables and the Groomsport Inn, both in Groomsport, and Ireland's oldest pub, Grace Neils in Donegadee. Today, we are going to give you an insight into the bar and restaurant game. Welcome to Amazing Food and Drink. I'm here today with the proprietor of the stables, the Groomsport Inn in Ireland's oldest pub, Grace Neils, Mr. Paul O'Kane. How are you doing, Paul? All right, Colin, how are you? Very well, it's lovely to see you here. You too. Just like to start by you giving me a bit of background about yourself. Well, Colin, I'm uh, just from a very average working class background, North Belfast. Um, I would have loved to play football. Um, unfortunately, whenever I was at school, it was probably made more sense for me to get out to work. So from a very young age, I have been out working from 13. Good lad. And where did you start work? I would have started in a wee place in Cary called Prospect House and then um, from when I was 16 the day I left school I started full time in the Bellevue Arms on the Anthem Road. So that was your journey into the, the world of bars, restaurants etc? Yeah it was. Um, we never started in the Bellevue Arms at the age of 16. Um, the, the owners of that's the Diamond family and then Eamon Diamond so I worked for him for 21 years and great grinding wasn't always easy mm -hmm. to be fair he was very very good to me however it was a good understanding a good upbringing um, good platform then an opportunity came around 2006 to maybe go out on our own and took that opportunity and in terms of what you did and what you learned in the Bellevue Arms uh, with Eamon Diamond. Talk a wee bit about that. Well, the Bellevue Arms is a, a local pub, so it is, um, with a restaurant. And coming from North Belfast, I was familiar with most of the guests that would have come in and out of it. That's so, right. <laughs> um, and I really, really enjoyed working with those people. So I initially started off in the restaurant, working as this young 16-year-old fur-haired guy, serving tables. Making a fortune on tips, may I say, and <laughs> I enjoyed that. And then, as Eamon progressed, he built the Marine Court Hotel some 20 years ago now. In Bangor, yeah. In Bangor. So he asked me to go down there as the food service manager, then duty manager. And I'd done that, and I really enjoyed that as well. It was a hotel environment, so something a little bit more different to what I had done. However, great experience. Then Eamon bought his family out in 2003, the Bellevue Arms, so there was an opportunity to go back to manage the whole complex. And if I'm brutally honest, I thought I might not have had the experience for it. I thought, Eamon, I'll give this a chance here. I'll give it my best shot. He invested a lot of money, and I was there for three years, and I really, really enjoyed it. And I thought, well, you know what? If I can manage the Bellevue Arms, probably one of the busiest pubs in Northern Ireland, I would say without any fear of contradiction. The opportunity came along to go out on our own and I thought, yeah, I'm gonna have a crack at that, I'm ready. Brilliant. So your first bar then on your own was The Stables, if I'm not mistaken? The Stables in Groomsport, yeah. I had always a, a food background. So The Stables in Groomsport, for those who know it, is a predominantly food place. Albeit that we added a function suite to it called Gordon Suite. Mm -hmm. After Mandy's late father, we called it after that, or after him. Um, so what we had was a very, very busy restaurant that had to be maintained and sustained. And then we thought there was a market for functions, weddings and so forth. Um, so we turned what was known as a fine dining restaurant into a function suite. And then a year later, Groomsport's just a small village with a local pub. Mm -hmm. And the local pub became available some year, maybe two years at the very most after we initially took the stables. And I just thought, do you know what? If we don't have a crack at this pub, someone else is going to come in and do it. And they're going to be our competitors. Mm -hmm. So we took the pub and it all works together because in the pub... We have good, wholesome food, looking after the local people, very relaxed atmosphere. And then in the stables, we're completely different. Family restaurant, 
no pub environment as such and we have the function suite for weddings, engagement parties, 40th birthdays. So we've tried to capture everything that that particular village needs. Brilliant. And how then did um, Ireland's, Ireland, sorry, oldest pub come about then, Grace Nails? Um, gosh, we had two places at this time and very sadly it had closed. So it had, and the person who owned that pub was a regular in our, the Grooms Port Inn. And because Donegade is only three miles down the road, it was just more curiosity. Let's go and have a look at it. And the guy who owned it, I sat down and we talked it out. And I said, look, we'll take this on a lease for two years and the understanding that we bought at a fair price after two years. Because it was closed, it needed a whole lot of work done to it. So it was worth investing that money into it. Mm -hmm. And I put all my centre forwards into it, my main management team. And I thought, you know what, we've two years to see if this is going to work. And to be fair to that management team, they've made a great, great success of it. And after two years, we've done the deal, we got it bought and that's bought. Brilliant. And how's it going for you? Yeah, at the moment, touch food, it's going very well, probably exceeding our expectation. Um, however, that's done a whole lot of hard work yeah. from the management team and the staff that's in it. It's a, they're all working very hard. And how do the people of Donegadee, how, how do they find it? Yeah, I mean, like I said, it's only three miles away from Groomsport. Mm -hmm. The people of, Don of Donegadee are very, very proud to say that the oldest pub in Ireland is on their doorstep. They support us very, very well, and we do our best to look after them as well. Brilliant. And in terms of local produce, for example, and local suppliers, how does that work with your businesses? Oh, I think that that's very, very important. Um, because we buy local, the like of Hamilton's who look after our fruit and veg, um, our butcher, our meat comes locally. I mean, Palace do a lot of our dry goods and stuff, but the reps are local. I think it's very, very important that Whenever you buy local, those people are going to support you and it has a massive knock-on effect. And when the produce is good, not only is it good for us, but it's good for that butcher, it's good for that fruit and veg person. So it all works together and it all comes together. And some of those people are, are probably your clients as well. They'll come for in sure. And, yeah, yeah. yeah, for sure. They, they do, they all support us and like, well, yeah, it definitely all works together. Okay, and if I was interested in opening a bar, what advice would you give me? How, how would I go about it? I'd probably probably be the wrong person to ask. <laughs> Why would that be? No. Oh, our staff would probably say that. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, if you were going to open up a pub, what would, the three things that I have learned um, most importantly is that you can be a busy fool mm -hmm. and you can um, invest too much money and the silly things. I mean, the what I would suggest is that if your wages are right, you got to make sure the service is good. However, the wages have got to be right for the employees. You mean? No, your overall wage percentage. Okay, sorry, your sorry, take, like costs, right? yeah, your cost. Your food stocks and your drink stocks have to be accurate. They have to be monitored, whether it be week by week or month by month. So you have your wages. You have your purchase and then your, your overheads with your heating and lighting and so forth. You've got to be careful with all that there. So you do. Too often, you see too many people, if the wage bill's too high, you have no chance of getting out the other side. Mm -hmm. And the lease of pub, the lease of pub, you have, it has to work for both the person who's going to lease and the person who owns it, but it has to be fair for everyone. Okay. And in terms of actually starting out would you recommend working in a bar working in a restaurant is that is that the best way to go or would you go the college route or university route with my experience um it was all on the ground so it was so i did go to college a little bit however i gained my experience working for somebody as clued in as eamon diamond who just was very very fair but very very intelligent he had the vision he could have walked through the place within five minutes he'd observed and everything that was going on his attention to detail was great and 
I think that I have learned that from him as opposed to textbook. Whenever you sit down and go through it all in textbook, what's reality is a wee bit different. Absolutely. So if I had a son, uh, could I send him to Paul O'Kane uh, to teach him how to become a restaurateur and bar owner? Um, my goodness. I would look after your son, Colin, <laughs> no doubt about it. I know you would. But I try and give him a good understanding of the business, for sure. If anybody was going to go out in business on their own, they definitely have to go in. They have to learn before they do it. I see it too often. People outside of the game coming in, taking pubs, thinking it's just as easy as making it work. It's not. Brilliant. That leads me on to them. So what are the advantages of owning a bar and restaurant? And what are the, the downsides, the disadvantages of owning a bar and restaurant? The own, if it's successful, it gives you, gives your family probably a better lifestyle. Mm -hmm. However, coming from Baltimore in a very working class background, you have to work. You can't go in and you just say, oh, that's my pub, that's great, I don't have to work. You have to work. There's no substitute for hard work. For sure. However, to make it work, you got to be there and you got to work yourself. If you're not there, it's not going to work. That's the bottom. Because no one works as hard as you, would that be a fair comment? I wouldn't say that. There's a whole lot of people who work probably harder than me, but the downside of it is you're probably always thinking. You know, there's many, many sleepless nights. We're not in there. Um, whenever it's really busy, you have your busy time, you're constantly thinking, right, this has to work. We've got to make sure this is right. Because all the time you have new people coming into these places. So if we get it right at the busy times, there's a good chance they'll come back. If we don't get it right, there's a good chance they won't. And then there's the other side. Whenever you have your difficult months, autumn, winter, you've got to get that right as well. And you've got to get it managed properly. And you've got to trim it back and cut it back and tighten it up. So you're always thinking. Brilliant. So we're, we're coming into those, some of those months. I mean, after Christmas is really busy, as you know, you'll appreciate now. What about the January and February when, when people are paying off their credit card bills? Well, what's the idea? Have you any plans? Well, anything for us punters? Well, over Christmas, it's busy, right? And everybody works very, very hard. And that's all very well, and that's great. However, you still do have to plan it out. You know, Christmas is one month, it's December. But you've got to market what you're going to do in January and February for these people who are going to come out in December. Mm -hmm. Everybody's flush with their money the month of December <laughs> and everybody's looking for a bargain January, February. So we've took a number of steps and we market that throughout our Christmas period just to let people see that you come back here in January or February and we have special offers, whether it's an early evening menu, which is very reasonably priced, or, I mean, we're doing a number of things. We're doing discounts. Um, you have to market what you're doing January and February and even. And what about vouchers? Uh, surely it's a good idea to buy vouchers for someone for Christmas for any of your three uh, yeah, establishments. Sure. Yeah, we have that. Um, we would be uh, promoting vouchers now. People do buy them for Christmas presents. If I'm honest, it, you know, it's a great idea. It's a great seller. Unfortunately, whenever they're bought in December, they're redeemed in January and February, there's still no money coming across for us, but it's a great idea, of course it is. Brilliant. And have you got websites have you, uh, you got websites for your businesses? We do. Um, we have a, a marketing girl in particular who looks after all our marketing. The managers in each of the three places look after their own marketing also. We have a girl, Susie, who deals with the marketing over looks at all. Very, very active are all the managers. Um, Websites for sure. More mature people are looking at the websites. Facebook, Instagram, you know, we've got to be really, really active in that there. And the managers are. And my, my own son doing a degree in uh, marketing himself. So he tries to bring a little bit to the table as well. And it's so, so important. Marketing is. I hope you're paying them. No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> So I'd like to delve a wee bit into, uh, we, we're, we're very keen on local produce here at Amazing Food and Drink. Uh, could you give me some of the suppliers that you use both on food and drink who are very local, maybe to yourselves, uh, in Groomsport and Donegadee? Well, in Donegadee, you have, everybody knows Copeland Islands. Yeah. There's a new gin out at the moment, Copeland Gin. We would, we would promote that, so we would. The Jawbox Gin, all the gin. The gins are the big one at the moment, and there's quite a lot of local gins. 
from the food perspective, all the, the Hamilton's is a fruit and veg supplier. We use Makatomi's for the meat, um, Primacy meats, there's vegan meat as well. I mean, we try and give everybody a turn for that there, all the local ones. And all locally based. What about uh, organic food or sustainable food? Yeah, well, that's definitely on the up um, for sure. And we have a lot of vegans and so forth. Yeah, we, we have to accommodate that. And we have to evolve and move with the times as far as all that's concerned. Okay, and again, um, you, you, you'd spoken about offers. What about um, linking up with suppliers to do offers? Have you thought about that or? Um, well, just lately, uh, for Christmas, what we do is the regulars in the, the grooms pour in and we have a regulars night in Grace Neils. Mm -hmm. And what we do for that there is we give everyone in the village or everyone that comes to the pub that night a complimented Christmas dinner. So it's a massive gesture. It is a massive gesture. We're certainly talk of the village, talk of the town. However, to be fair, I do get my purchasing guy to have a word with those suppliers to see if they will help with that cost and they're all very, very accommodating. So Which is brilliant. Yeah, so it's, sure. it's working both ways. Yeah? It, it works for everyone. And we make that clear, you know, the regulars are all thinking it's not just a lovely gesture. It is for sure. However, those suppliers are definitely helping us. Okay, and so you, you've been in business now on your own since 2006? Yeah. Okay, so we're looking 12 years, getting into 13 years. Yeah. And it's had its ups and downs? For sure. Okay, so where is Paul O'Kane going in the future? Gosh, I'm not Take so over sure. the world? No, definitely not take over the world. We're involved in three places at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, would I like a fourth place or be involved in a fourth place? I'm not sure, but it need to be something special. It need to be something special. And it depends what my kids want to do also. Would your children be interested in coming in the family business? I don't think so. My daughter's just beautiful. She's different. She doesn't want to work in the game. She wants more into beauty. That's her. My son worked with us for seven years. Is that what he wants to do in the He's future? He's had enough? Um, maybe, maybe. And would you consider coming back to your North Belfast roots with some new venture? Maybe getting into partnership with Eamon Diamond? Um, gosh. Very, very proud to come to North Belfast, for sure. Is it maybe a half an hour up the road too far? I don't know. If it was the right place, would we look at it? Of course we would. Okay, and in terms of uh, how it's impacted upon your, your, your home life, I mean, I know it's a difficult industry. Has it been tough? Has it been rewarding? Both? Um, I'm, just, I'm just trying to get you to think out loud uh, here because there's people going to be watching who might be interested in, in opening their own bar or restaurant. I think to be fair, if you're going to do it, you have to put the hours in. And if you're going to do it, your other half or your wife or your partner, whoever it might be, they have to be understanding. I mean, for me to go into Belfast on a Saturday night for a few drinks and a nice bite to eat, that sounds lovely. I can't do that. Mm -hmm. Can I do it on a Monday night or a Tuesday night? For sure. However, when it's not busy, we all can get our time off. But you know, I think if you're going to do it, you have to be prepared to do it. And your partner or your wife has to understand, you know, I'm with someone here who has to work late at night, who has to work nights, who has to be always on the go. So. If you want a, a missus or a partner to say, right, you're doing a nine to five job, well then it's not for you. Okay, good lad. And look, we've seen um, bars and restaurants closing throughout Ireland, you know, over the last number of years. And that's been difficult. How are you future-proofing yourself for that? What, I think what measures are you taking? It's definitely very, very difficult and it's tough times. It's still tough times. Whenever we went into it in 2006, it was probably at the height of the peak. And if I'm brutally honest, the first year in the stables, 12 or 13 years ago, was probably the best year. Mm -hmm. Tough times. Everybody's looking to bargain. The government are insisting that you give your staff a pay raise. Mm -hmm. Your customers don't want to see an increase in the menu. However, you have to move with it. And small increases 
The staff have to be looked after and you just gotta I think that if you give good quality food with good efficient friendly service which you're very good at not so sure if your places are clean I think if you give every a customer what they want it gives you half a chance okay. it's tough out there have you thought about maybe a cookery school or cocktail lessons or wine tasting whiskey tasting tasting gin tasting yeah well we have done gin tastings in the past wine tastings um, yeah the staff would be up to speed with that there we don't do an awful lot of wine tasting for our guests however the staff are all very knowledgeable mm -hmm. in regards to um, the wine list um, whiskey tastings it's a good idea maybe mm. you've just taught me something yeah something. <laughs> the, the cookery good maybe another angle Cookie schools, yeah, it's good. I mean, the cookie school would certainly work in Grace Neils, mm -hmm. um, but the clientele's a little bit different to the stables. Um, yeah, it's certainly something uh, you for consider. Thought. Yeah, for sure. And, and how, how could you big up the fact that you own Ireland's oldest pub? Uh, that's some accolade. It is, and um, Susie, who looks after her market, and she's really going to go to town on that this year, so she is, because with all these cruise liners coming in, um, every American wants to be Irish. Absolutely. So, yeah, there's a massive market on the fact or on the back of that. There, I mean, we flaunted with our staff with their uniform and stipulates Ireland's oldest pub, and yeah, to be fair, very very proud to say. And in fairness, yeah. until you told me a couple of years ago, I didn't actually know that. A lot of people wouldn't have known it, and it probably wasn't something that was always pushed on. But yeah, it, it's. We need to really push it on because it's something to be very proud of. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, I think that could be your, your flagship uh, organisation. Definitely. 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 Brilliant. Okay. And let me just think, lastly, um, what advice would you give to, to someone who is thinking, I know you've mentioned some of this again uh, earlier, but what advice would you give to someone who's considering a life in the bar and restaurant trade? And as well as that, is local the way to go? Yeah, I think they got to pitch where they're going. What's happening now with times being tough is village pubs are difficult. There's a lot of them closing down. And mm -hmm. they're closing down because it's probably a lot cheaper to buy a bottle of wine in the local supermarket or 12 tins of beer. It's, and it is tough. There's no doubt about that there. However, if it's done right and you get the simple things right, and you push it on, it gives you a good chance. So, no, I, I think that... So I, there's hope, there's still life in the old dog yet? Yeah, there's definitely, definitely. And there's a whole lot of good houses out there, but if you get the simple things right, from the people drive into the car park, if it's spotless, the venue's spotless, the menu's reasonably priced, the drink service is very good, the food service is very good, the quality of food is very, very consistent. It has to be consistent. Mm -hmm. And... You're only as good as your last meal. You're only as good as your last meal. And what about the local produce element? Because I know you, you've spoken off camera there, you're really keen on that. No doubt. I mean, to go outside of Ireland, I mean, and start buying cheaper produce, it's definitely unfair. There's no doubt about it. The produce from the local people, from Ireland, is definitely much more superior to some of the the cheaper produce that you can't get from afar. Absolutely, and as you said earlier, you're supporting supporting local communities too. Yeah, for sure, you have to, and yeah, yeah, and that's very, very important. I mean, we would sponsor the local kids' football team, and we're involved with the darts and the pool and the hockey. And yeah, you're, you're very good at sponsoring so. local local sports. You, you absolutely are. I can vouch for that. All right, fine. brilliant. Well, I think it's important to put a little bit back out there, sort of, for sure, and particularly with the kids because. Very often, if you're coming out calling with your kids, it's not where you and Lorraine want, want to go, it's where your kids want to go. A hundred percent. They rule the roost now. They rule the roost. And it's only going to go worse, you tell me too. Oh, definitely. <laughs> Whenever they get to 15, 16, it does. So what are your top tips for running a bar and restaurant? All right, Colin, if you were to take on a restaurant on a bar tomorrow, right, and you say to me, look, Paul, give me a wee bit of advice here. What would my advice with my experience? Something that I'm not brilliant at, right? However, I really, really do appreciate my staff, but I don't tell them often enough. You've got the opportunity now, yeah. Paul. And they all, they know. I'm not this person to go around, put my arm around people and say, you're doing an amazing job. 
However, I really do appreciate how hard they work. I think it's important to let your staff know that from time to time. You've got to get it right. If your wage bill, pro rata, in terms of what your lift is, mm -hmm. exceeds a certain amount, it's usually in around 30%. Mm -hmm. If your wage bill is too high, you have no chance of getting out the other side. So you've got to manage that, or your managers have got to manage that properly. So your food costs and your drink costs, it has you have to be very careful. Because if you're not getting your mark up, it's not going to work. So if you get your, your wages right, your costings right, purchasing, we have a purchasing manager who is responsible for the three places to do the purchasing of the three places. If he can save us, a guy on Michael Collins, if he can save us 5%, it's massive over the year. However, if we're paying 5% more, it's also massive over the year. Okay. The other thing that you need to have is somebody very strong in your office because we have a girl at Kareem who's been with us right from the beginning. She's the person saying, Paul, this all looks very positive. However, your VAT bills to come out once a quarter. And when that fat bill comes out, it's 20% of your overall sales. Mm -hmm. That has to go. So whenever you have somebody as strong in the office, and if you get that bit right, if you get your staffing levels right, you get your costings right, keep a wee on your heat and lighting. After that, there, the service has to be right. If your service is not good, people will not come back. If the food's not good, they'll not come back. You know, you've got to give that whole... Everything has to come together. And if you get all the simple things right, you have half a chance. Also, entertainment's very, very important. You know, in Ireland's oldest pub, you have to pitch it right. And your entertainment has to be right. I mean, Ireland's oldest pub, those, the guests that come in there on a Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday afternoon. Friday night, they want acoustic. Sunday afternoon, they want light acoustic. Saturday evening, like light acoustic, Saturday evening, it's got to be a little bit more lively. However, it all has to be live entertainment. Whereas in the Grooms Port Inn, the entertainment's a little bit different. In the stables, what we have there, we do a tribute once a month, where it's dinner and show. So you have to pitch it right. Each place is different. Depends on your clientele, obviously. Clientele and the venue. Brilliant. And um, any last tips before we finish? If it's a local pub, if it's a local pub, you have to look after everyone. Treat everyone the same. A local as if they're all VIPs. As if they're all VIPs. Nobody wants to be patronised. My perception on it is that I talk to everyone the way I would like them to talk to me. I know better than anyone else, and no one else is any better than me. And in the local pub, every local person wants you to have time for them. That's your bread and butter. You have to look after these people. And you are absolutely brilliant at that. 100%, I can speak from experience, you're brilliant at that. I'm sure there's some people who would disagree with it, Colin. I doubt that. I However, doubt that, Paul. my objective is that anyone comes through that door, that we look after them. So, Paul, thanks very much for your insights today. Thank you, Colin. And thank you for listening uh, here at Amazing Food and Drink. And if you have a look at the links below, you'll see links to all Paul's uh, businesses and indeed our own site. And we'll see you again soon. Thank you.